Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig and what I want to show you in this video is part of the system I'm going to be using in my upcoming advanced turn-based combat course. I have modulized it and made it so that you can just put in two scripts into an object like this. In a create event you call the script init walking and the step event you call grid walk and then you have a fully functioning grid walk system and you can set the amount that you move on that grid up to you. It's a perfectly smooth system that has collisions inside of it, allows you to set your own sprites for different directions, and you can modify it to fit the game that you are working on. So let's break this down really quickly just to show you how I did it, how you might modify it, and show you how it works. So the init walking script has four macros, which have zero, one, two, and three, these are the directions that you can move. They then relate to a variable called my walk animations where you set the sprites that you want to use. You can see it is an array and each of those macros are an index in that array. I have sprite zero being the default sprite and sprite two being the walk right sprite. And we set each of these whenever we move in a certain direction. Now I've commented everything out quite thoroughly so you can probably understand it. The main thing I wanna show you in here though is walk distance, which is how far you're actually gonna move. So if I change this to 64, and 64 is divisible by the walk speed that we have evenly, which is important, we will now move 64 each time, which is really cool. So you can set this to be any size you want as long as your walk distance and walk speed are divisible equally. The other thing inside of here is the collision object. So I made object one this green square, and I set that to be our collision object, which is important. If you want to have more robust collision checking inside of here, then you would make a parent and then put all of the collision objects as children to that parent and set the parent as the collision object. Let's go into the actual grid walk script, and it's broken down by region here to be really easy to read and understand. So we have the controls, which have arrow keys and the keyboard keys using the max function right here. You can add in your own keys and even put in support for gamepad controllers. If you wanted to do that, just put them in right there. Now let's go to the collision checking, which uses a collision rectangle and using the B box properties and our collision object, which we set in the init script. And we do all of that checking to see if it's negative four. The reason that we check if it's negative four is that negative four relates to no one, it's the exact same thing, and collision rectangle will return no one if there's nothing there. So basically saying, if nothing is there, then we are clear in that direction. We store those clear directions in a variable, and then we check them when we begin to move. So the first check here is the key check. So we have the current key, being the max value, max again, of the key presses that we have, plus 0 0.5. If you take out the 0 0.5, this switch statement will default to always going to the first case, which in our case is right, and so your character will just always move to the right. So keep this in, that's important. Now, this is checking to see if we are moving, if we are standing still, then we can accept key input, and if we can, then we just check to see which key is being pressed. And they pretty much all do the same thing. They set the sprite index, current direction, and to see if we are clear that direction, then begin moving, okay? Once we are moving, then we come down and set our actual movement and do all of that in here. So if we are moving, set the image speed to one, because it's probably an animation. We check our current direction, which we already set, and then based on that current direction, we actually move that direction. There you go. We check how much we've moved with current distance and current speed. So we keep track of how far we're going. And then as soon as we've reached a specific distance, which is our walk distance variable, we set everything back to zero and we stop moving entirely. And that's it. You just put those in your object, set the collision object, and then you've got a fully animated working grid walking system, which is really cool. So you can download both of these scripts, the init walking and grid walk. I will leave links to them in the comments below. Grab them, alter them, play with them, 
do whatever you want. It's just really cool. I wanted to give you this to show you how I set up a grid walking system that works really well for me. And in a later video, I'm gonna show you how to do a party grid walking system, which once again, I'm using in my advanced turn-based combat course, which will be launching very soon. So stay connected for updates on that and where you'll be able to get it. Thanks for joining me. And as always, have fun making great games and I'll talk to you later.